Hi folks, Irish Trekkie, back another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection model review, this time featuring issue 78. We have USS Voyagers, and I should poke it up there, Aero Shuttle. This now, ever since I heard it being part of the collection, I have been, oh, trying to not over-anticipate, because again, high expectations have a long way to fall, but I hope I'm not going to be let down, because this is such a gem of a little ship. And I'm dying to get my hands on it. And it looks like a nice sizable ship as well. But let's put that to one side for a second and let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? And I must say, and I'm going to follow up with a mini little video in a while, but the channel has recently hit just over 1 million views. 1 freaking million. Thank you, everybody. I'm so happy. I'm so shocked. But... Listen, I like, I, I, I remember saying to Lady Trekkie, like when, when, um, when I hit 100 subscribers, um, I'm almost at 4,000, but uh, you get this little notification saying, um, oh, you've hit 100 subscribers, you could fill a cinema, you know, and I'm kind of going, oh, that would be weird. And uh, here we are, almost at 4,000 subscribers, 1 million freaking views. I'm a very happy Trekkie. So again, I just want to, I just really want to say thank you. To you ladies and gentlemen at home kids and 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 um seniors alike and everybody in between thanks for watching and uh, here's to another million views and another 78 uh oh, i'm sure i get killed if i said another 78 issues but listen let's have a look at this issue and see what we have inside so we have a nice graphic uh this is the aero shuttle which uh, you could see the outline of it on the belly of the saucer section in Voyager never saw the light of day unfortunately but if I remember I'll drop a link in the description box of uh, some test footage I came across um, someone mentioned it to me and their name eludes me over on Facebook and uh, yeah listen if you're on a computer or on your smartphone do check out Irish Trekkie Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because there's one hell of a community so I love being surrounded by such awesome people it's fantastic but anyway I digress Contents. We have our four sections. Voyager Aero Shuttle, designing and building the ship, designing Star Trek Voyager sets, which could be interesting actually, and on-screen appearances. We have our mounting instructions and we have our details here. So, type of ship auxiliary, attached to USS Voyager, launch 2369, length 20 meters approximately, crewed by four, top speed warp five, probably has a crew speed of what warp three warp four maybe and weaponry phasers two forward micro torpedo launchers and some nice graphics there as well and yes you're probably wondering what's all this what would you call it? there's a name for that kind of pattern i can't remember what it is i am shooting on location <laughs> i'm not i'm not at the trekkie layer at the moment unfortunately but uh you know it needs must when i want to get videos up to you so lovely graphic nice little shot here of the kind of small warp core and the aero shuttle was a small warp capable vessel designed and integrated into the underside of the saucer section of intrepid class vessels such as uss voyager the star trek illustrator and technical consultant rick sternbeck provided the technical report on the aero shuttle um and there's i touched a little bit on the magazine to kind of because i was eager to get a, into it and there's a nice little bit actually about designing the ship itself and um, this is the kind of micro warp core which would be this kind of section up here which would feed down into this very aerodynamic shell and you'll probably see some things that are familiar in design um but i won't go into too much detail don't want to let all the surprises go for people who want to read through the magazines here is some footage of how she would detach so that's what we've seen in all the episodes and then here she is detached now. So we have this molded kind of enclave here where it just sits up into. But oh, it would have been so cool to see it just kind of pop out. Um, what does it say here? Ba -ba -ba -boom. When the aero shuttle was docked with Voyager, the only visible area was the lower hull. This was flush with the lower decks of the saucer section. Uh, the structure and integrity fields were designed to ensure that it was completely integrated with the mothership. When it was launched, it dropped away from the saucer section before it engines fired and it became completely independent. So, drop away. So, there was probably some kind of reaction control system. Um, 
inside it to gently just kind of detach it from Voyager where it just kind of dropped down because obviously generally probably wouldn't have any kind of gravitational pull on it making a fall out of Voyager and that's when she kind of lit and burned the engines and kind of went on her own steam. The interior lighting of the air shuttle bay could be clearly seen when the craft dropped away. Uh, once the air shuttle was clear, it moved away quickly uh, to avoid any chance that it might collide with the two vessels. So, like, that's fair enough. That's that's standard safety procedures. And uh, here we have the profile. So we have atmospheric wing, wing tip lift engine. So these are lift engines here and here as well. So again, for vertical uh, VTOL operations, vertical takeoff and landing. For those of you who don't know what VTOL was, uh, let me see here. Bum, 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 bum. So air shuttles, various sensor pallets received upgraded detectors and optical data uh, cabling just prior to its commissioning. This extended the craft's reliable long-range scanning abilities because it was a, it was a recon ship as well as a captain's yacht. Because we've seen the Cousteau in uh, Nemesis, which was the captain's yacht in the Sovereign. Uh, we know there was a captain's yacht in the Enterprise D as well, more of a UFO-shaped um, doohickey. Which I actually would like um, to see in the collections. But because we have the Gusto now we have the Euro Shuttle. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it'll be cool. But definitely, you know by the look of the ship, we have atmospheric capabilities. I love the kind of ramp up engines here as well. Which is always good. Um, construction of the Euro Shuttle began in 2369 after impulse and warp flight simulations had validated the concept. The initial procurement order was for two structural testing units two flying prototypes and 15 production vehicles. So where there's 15 vehicles, there's 15 Intrepids, one would assume. Um, but I know some of them were repurposed, weren't they, I think? Possibly. And the air shuttle was designed for atmospheric flight and was given true aerodynamic properties. Um, uh, it was also equipped with three landing legs uh, that were capable of landing on the surface of planets. Now, I think it could land without the deployment of the legs as well, as far as I'm aware. And here's a bit on planetary flight. Uh, atmospheric operations were improved 450% in total uh, hover time with the use of the Aero Shuttle's large wings. Energy from the impulse system drove both di direct exhaust vents as well as electrostatic airflow coils, uh, allowing the Aero Shuttle to generate lift at a standstill. While traditional starships had such... had little I came up. While traditional starships and shuttle impulse fields accomplished hovering with brute gravity cancelling force, the manipulation of airflow was considered a more elegant solution. The multiple benefits of better use and multiple benefits were, you know, better use of fuel and such. Low stress and stealth could not be ignored. So again, with a reconnaissance ship, stealth would play a big role in it. Uh, the Aero Shuttle's landing gear was a tricycle leg system. Operated by electrohydraulics, unlike the Intrepid's foot pad structures, um, which you which only held the vessel steady while under impulse field support, the shuttle was supported uh, by these these legs basically supported the entire mass of the craft. In case the gear failed, the shuttle could make a touchdown um, on a relatively flat or soft surface with minimal damage to the hull plating as well. Kind of similar to what I just said, but that's cool. That's cool. Okay, so here we have designing the ship. So, as far as I understand, and let me know if I'm wrong, probably am, but this ship showed up in more so technical manuals. And I'm just kind of reading through here again, because these are always first looks. Um, but de -ca -de -ca -de -ca -de -de. Yeah, so um, Adam uh, Lebowitz and Rob Bonshun, two digital artists based on foundation imaging, they took the lead. They did this on their own back. Um, they thought it would be cool to say, like, if they, if they could throw something together and kind of show it to the production team that it would get integrated into the uh, series. Um, but a lot of the design routes were based on the runabout. Obviously, you can see from um, Rick Sternbeck when he drew up sketches to what the air shuttle could look like. Obviously, uh, we ended up with this. Um, it's definitely based on the runabout which is cool because again there's a lot of development gone into the runabout so why not bring over a lot of components and a lot of knowledge gained from the runabout and integrate it into an aerodynamic form um with the likes of the aero shuttle which i think is cool but um it's really awesome that these two guys you know 
they met up after work, they did this on their own back and put together a um, presentation to show. And it was an awesome presentation. Uh, actually, here's some shots of it here, actually, and some epic, cool shots here. But the only reason it didn't make it into the show is because Nemesis was on the horizon and they didn't want to take away from the Cousteau being debuted on the big screen as well. So we had the Delta Flyer too. Um, but yeah, it, it always kind of, I always wondered why did they build a ship when the ship was sitting down in the, in the, the depths of the saucer section. You're kind of going, listen, you know, just let's, let's see the arrow, let's see the arrow shuttle, please. But, um, it's cool, like it's it's cool nonetheless, and I'm I'm very grateful of having it here. Um, what do we see? Um, Bonshun built the actual uh, built the actual model of the air shuttle, although it did not have, uh, he did not get a great chance to put the finer uh, detailed touches on it. Um, I'm sure if it would have went to screen, they would have had that time. Um, the centre part of the ship was deliberately styled to look like the runabout. This was because um, if they filmed inside the cockpit. They could use the existing set to save money. Well, that's a, that's a cool little idea as well. <laughs> Always thinking these clever production people. So here we have a little featurette on designing the sets. And oh my God, that's such a cool. Do you know what? Do you know what I love about this? We see the off runs to the nacelles here, the the, the, the feeding pipes. Um, whereas we didn't see that in, I don't think we saw that in Voyager, did we? It was just the straight down um straight down in war core but uh, it's always great to see a glimpse of what could have been but there were some fantastic um sets in voyager that's a lovely shuttle bay actually and what looks like a kind of isolation tube kind of like what we had hue in and stuff like that as well and uh, that now i prefer that as a ready room um, i could never understand the weird table in voyager's ready room like how many cups of coffee could you fit on that Come on, like in all fairness. And having these sweeping windows overhead as well, giving you such a, gl a glimpse of the outside. Come on, maybe. Maybe we could hope for some awesome sets with Discovery. You never know. Anyway, wrapping it up. Uh, first appearance, care Caretaker Part 1. Um, it's the ship from Star Trek Voyager. Like, yeah, I suppose it would technically be first appearance because we can see the belly of it here. Um, but unfortunately, we never saw it on screen. Um, but what else do we have here? Uh, the Aero Shuttle was originally going to be called the Aero Wing. It had been changed and it was discovered that the name had already been trademarked by the Mighty Ducks Toys. Oh, unfortunate. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Captain Harry Kim's USS Rhode Island. Uh, Captain Kim indeed. A Nova class ship from the 21st, 25th century was equipped with a similar type of auxiliary vessel to the Aero Shuttle. Um, it was also located on the underside of the saucer section. Um, but the Rhode Island, uh, they would have called it the Wave Rider. Now, I think the original name of the Air Shuttle was the Manta Manta Shuttle or something like that. I could be wrong. I must go through this magazine in a little bit more detail. And we have the J-Class Starship, Harry Mudd's ship from the remastered series, I believe. Yes, remastered version of the original series craft. So let's close out on what looks like actually a really good magazine. And let's have a look at this model, shall we? Let's get her out of these shackles and I wonder what craft we'll be comparing her to hmm let's see let's put that to one side and let's get all up close and personal so here we have the aero shuttle very distinctive runabout but let's actually just look at the build first and foremost shall we so metal plastic there you go so you know what it is uh, we have a bit of a seam along the front here kind of separating a bit nothing too too vulgar but we, we, we'll give it a bit of a break on that um or nacelles we have plastic blue and we have plastic bizarre collectors as well which are going to capture the light they're a bit dull because they are in these kind of heavy casings here impulse is painted on uh window alignment painting is pretty good so let's have a look at paint first and foremost so it's pretty much one body tone there's a little bit of accents on the wing and on the main top of it here. Um, also, we have some paint accents going down into the top of the wings here as well. Decal applications, pretty nice. Uh, we have USS Voyager. It's a shame there was no other name but Aero Shuttle on it because like we had the Orinocos, the Delta Flyers, we had Galileo, Goddard and such. 
even Copernicus as well. So it would have been nice to have a, a like a name on uh, this particular ship. Um, some good sculpts on the ventral section here with some very clean decals and some very sharp and, and aggressive kind of painting here. Uh, here we have the VTOL engines just on the front and tips of the wings. And we can see that replicated up here as well. Um, also the reaction control systems as well. Now I think that's where the weapons are located and then the deflector, tiny little deflector dish there. Cockpit windows are nice, nice and crisp. Window alignment is actually pretty good. Very crisp USS Voyager here as well. And that Delta is backwards, actually, by the looks of it. Yep, Delta's backwards. God damn it. <laughs> or the pennant. Um, yeah, they're back. They're backwards. It should be high dip and short dip. I'm pretty sure that's that's the case. I think that, I think that's backwards. Let me know if I'm wrong, to be honest with you. Uh, here is the warp core as well that we saw in the magazine. Kind of nice gold finish to that as well. Overall, it's very, very crisp and clean. Even the back windows here as well. Um, here we have those insets along the uh, after the wings. Just pretty much actually around the whole body of it as well. Maybe there were kind of some kind of scoops as well for this um, stability control. Where it kind of took in air as, uh, along with um, its aerodynamic capabilities and um, we have some nice a bit of greebling up here as well very small and overall again the sculpt on the dorsal section is quite nice as well we have all these kind of different uh, platings throughout it's remarkably flat isn't it and you can see that kind of real cool scoop up to the impulse engines as well so again i'm sure she's she's happier in atmosphere than out of but again pretty good to have capabilities of up to warp 5 for such a small little ship uh, here we have the registry as well uh, 74656 interesting that it's not like NCC 74656 but again it's all good um, but yeah so that's the aero shuttle there it is in hand as well so let's give her a bit of a spin and uh, we compare her to a ship in the line as well as we always do here so she has a very substantial uh, mounting system there it does go over the vast majority of the wings so it's not going anywhere it's slightly elevated as well and has a kind of rear mounting system so the body of it does hang over the base as well so stability not an issue at all with the ship and um, to be honest with you in my opinion this is a fine addition to the ship the paint i suppose it kind of goes in line with voyager it does look a little bit muted just the overall tone of it. But I think that's... I, I think that's pretty accurate to Voyager. I'd have to kind of really revisit this. Obviously, these videos are more of like a first look unbox uh, rather than an in-depth breakdown. I just kind of want to show you the detail for you to make your own determinations as well. But anywho, let's compare it to a ship on the line just to kind of get a sense of scale. And I'm going to go with a ship that we've gotten a while ago. Haven't seen her for a while, even though she's a beautiful ship. I'm sure... Do you think? Do you know what I'm going to be showing you? I'm curious, actually. Let me know in the comment section below if you if you, if your assumption was correct when I debuted. Two peas in a pod. We have a lot of inspiration off the runabout coming into the Euro Shuttle. Maybe you probably thought I was going to pull out Voyager, but I just thought that would be a bit too easy. And we have seen Voyager more than we've seen this fantastic runabout. I I loved the runabout when we when we got it. Fantastic size. Great ship, uh, I think loved by all. I don't, I don't know anyone who said a bad word about um, the runabout, but um, definitely the reason I brought it over here, firstly, was to give you a sense of scale. But you can see like the cockpits, just the the warp core side up here. You can see over here, and even like the back aft windows. Obviously, more slanted. You can definitely see the stylings here, and even. Like the side windows are replicated too. So you can see there's a great tribute there. And I like the idea. Yes, from a production standpoint, they could use the same sets, which which is always awesome. But also, you know, from a practical standpoint, like why reinvent the wheel when we have such a great little design in the runabout? We can tweak it. We can make a, an aerodynamic version of it. Let's, let's repurpose. Like we've seen the saucer section used in um, Nebula class. 
um, starships as well. And again, the likes of the Reliant, the uh, Soyuz and such, you know, Saratoga. There, there's plenty to be said to re reduce, reuse, recycle as well. But anywho, that's going to be me, maybe a little bit longer of, a, of an update. Um, and I did say to Johnny's that I was going to put in a little nod to him. But I only have to realise it now after the end of the video. So, uh, John, if you're watching, thumbs up to you, buddy. And great having a chat. We actually had a chat with uh, Johnny in the last podcast. Uh, maybe check it out um, if you're finished watching this video. Um, he talks so much. He's just such a great guy. And he had such interesting things to say. And uh, I leave you with uh, the notion that you might find a little bit about fishy coffee. If you go check out that podcast. Anywho, I'm going to wrap it up there. Really, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can support by liking, sharing and subscribing. And let me know in the comments section below what you think about the Aero Shuttle. And uh, maybe what ships you're still looking forward to in the collection. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye.